The ORID reflection method is what you will be using to write your reflection. It's based on learning theory. So the ORID reflection method, ORID stands for an acronym. The O stands for objective, the R for reflective, the I for interpretive, and the D for decision or decisional. So the objective part of an ORID reflection is what you start with, and it's simply just writing down objectively what you experienced. What were the sensations? You could think of the five sensations. So what images do you recall? What sounds do you recall? What did people say? The reflective part, that's where you talk about what your emotions were, maybe what your mood was or your hunches. So you might also talk about what other people were seem to be reacting or their experiences. But really think about what your feelings were. And here you can also notice that you can think about was there any feelings in your body that you can remember? Was there a tightness or a sensation anywhere? Sometimes that's a clue as to what your feelings were. And then the interpretive part. This is the thinking part. The so what? So what value or meaning or significance did this experience have, if any? Think about any insights you have. You know, what can you conclude from this experience or what did you learn? And as an academic, you want to think about, well, how does this relate to any theories or models or other concepts that you're learning about? And then finally, decisional. So now what? Is this going to change the way you think or you, the way you behave? What might you do differently as a result of this experience? How are you going to apply what you learned to your life? So I want you to know that this is, as I mentioned at the beginning, based on some really sound learning theory. And in particular, it's based on, or it is, is based on Kolb's experiential learning cycle. And it's really so simple. There's just four steps. So the first step is concrete experience. You have an experience. That's all that means. The second part is reflective observation. It's like, well, so you had an experience that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to learn anything. We have experiences all the time that aren't necessarily learning experiences. But once you start reflecting on it, that's when the experience happens. Um, that's when the learning can happen. Like, hmm, let me just really reflect on this. How did I feel? Really thinking about what happened. And then the second step is abstract conceptualization. So this is when we start putting words to our experience, naming what happened, saying it to someone else, or writing about it. That's when we really start concrete, uh, making concrete what we've learned. And then this step here is active experimentation. So that's when we, after we learn, learn from it, we might decide to do something different or we might change the way we behave or try it out and then that of course leads to more experiences. So you can probably see the similarities to ORID in this with the O objective experience being the concrete experience just objectively saying what happened. Reflective is that reflective piece of course. Abstract conceptualization is the same as interpretive just thinking about and naming what your thoughts are around what happened and then decisional is the active experimentation. Kolb's theory was based on learning theory from John Dewey. John Dewey said there is no learning without reflection. So as I mentioned, we have experiences all the time. That doesn't mean we learn from them. Reflection and reflecting is really the beginning of our learning. And that's why we're going to write so many reflections in this class.